Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. Since my last video, I've gotten a lot of comments on people telling me what the uh, materials and uh, the hardness levels are within train rail, and I have found this information to be extremely useful. Uh, what I've gone ahead and done is I've taken the piece of rail that I cut with my bandsaw uh, in my last video, and I went through the process of machining it and hardening it just to see how hard I could get the surface to become. Uh, I have already completed this process, and what I have is going to be basically a glorified jeweler's bench block for Varid. Uh, I learned a lot doing this. Uh, I just did a simple water quench, brought the face up to non-magnetic. Uh, you could tell just by hitting it with a hammer on the side of it that it is differentially hardened because the entire piece did not make non-magnetic, um, it make it to that point rather. So stick around. This came out really cool and hopefully you'll see Varid using it in a video real soon. Well, here's a free tip, YouTube. If you go out and buy yourself a milling machine and you don't have a lot of experience, if it's cold in your shop, don't wear polar fleece. You turn yourself into a living example of Velcro. It's going to take forever to pull all these little chips out of this jacket. I'm at the point now where I'm happy with the surface finish. I got the majority of the deep scratches and everything taken out of this. It's down to an 80 grit finish. I have a nice radius on one side. Uh, this side still needs to be cleaned up. There's still this lip. Um, I don't know how that formed over the years, but I guess it's just wear. And to give you an idea of how much material I removed off of this to get it flat, let me zoom in just a little bit, if it'll focus. Okay, and I'm going to take the piece that I cut off in the bandsaw and just kind of stand up against the back here to give you an idea of just about how much material I removed. YouTube, here's the moment of truth. The uh, rail is almost up to a non-magnetic temperature. Uh, I've got just enough propane left in the tank to finish this. I hope, uh, since it's late, I can actually grab it with a pair of tongs. And I've got water in my shop sink. I'm gonna try to do a water crunch first to see if it gets hard at all. So I'm gonna reposition the camera. I'm gonna be running through the shop, around the plasma cam, into the sink with a non-magnetic, very hot piece of train rail and a pair of tongs. What could possibly go wrong? Well, it was definitely an interesting experience, never did anything like that before. And I went from tap water to 
almost really nice bath water in the sink. Uh, there's probably about 20, 25 gallons in this sink and it just feels really nice right now. Just like bath water. Let's see how our rail is doing. Looks pretty good. A little bit of oxidation. But, uh, let's take it over to the bench and get a closer look. I'll tell you, YouTube, I'm kind of excited. I want to see if this hardened. Uh, got a file. Just need to pop a handle on here real quick. I've got more files than handles, so uh, I trade them back and forth. Let's see. She's not biting. I think we have a winner. Before I put this in the forge, I hit the side of it with a ball peen hammer. And that's the little divot that it made. I want to see if the face of this uh, new bench block or bench anvil or whatever the heck you want to call it We'll take a hit from a ball peen hammer without leaving a mark. Let me readjust the camera here. Sorry about that, guys. Just wipe this off real quick. Grab my ball peen hammer. That's about the center of the frame. All right, there is a little bit of an impression there. It's not very deep. Uh, you can barely feel it, you can just see it. But it did definitely leave a mark. So it's not as hard as I thought it would be. And that's actually good. That means that I'm not gonna heat treat this. I'm gonna leave it as it is, because all this is going to be used for is uh, hammering soft wire in between a hammer and the work surface. So I think my job here is done. All right, YouTube. So after the sanding, uh, I brought it to an 80 grit then a 120 grit finish. It doesn't have to be ultra smooth, um, but it did get rid of a majority of the blemish. There's just a little mark where you could tell the ball peen hammer hit it. Uh, considering that this is going to be used with things like copper and silver, I'm not really worried about this taking a lot of abuse. Uh, and if the surface does get marred and scratched up and it needs to be redone, I have the milling machine, I have the forge, I can just do it again. So was it worth it? I think it was. I learned a lot and uh, I hope you did too. And if you made it to this part in the video, I'd like to thank you guys for stopping by and hanging out with me. Uh, we are at just over 7,400 subscribers now. Uh, last month was incredible. We got over 550 new people to the channel. Uh, to all of you new guys, welcome. To all of my old subscribers, thanks for sticking with me through the ups and downs. And uh, until the next video, this has been Jeff at Darkloon Metals. I will see you again soon.